Oh, hello, my beautiful women of the Kintsugi Masterclass. I am Laura Patricia Martin, and I'm so excited for this masterclass. Like, I've been talking to my partner all day and my team, and I'm just like, I feel like, hands down, this has been my most... There's so much depth. There's so much to understand. I feel like there's so many breakthroughs that are going to come. And so I'm just excited for these next two days. Make sure as you're coming on, hi, Suzanne, you say, Susan, sorry. As you're coming on, say hello. <clears throat> I'd love to know if this is your first time watching one of my master classes or you're an old friend. Um, I know Susan, Suzanne, you're, you're an old friend. Or Susan, I always get this, is it Suzanne or Susan? Help me with that one. And Kirsty, hello, hello. <sighs> Today we're going to be going deep. We are going to be talking about one of my favorite concepts in Japanese culture, but we're going to be tying this to IBS because it's my favorite concept because it really reflected back to me what I know I've felt inside of my journey and what other women has felt inside of their journeys and really just this rebuilding of understanding we're not broken. Nothing is wrong with us. It may feel that way <clears throat> and it may feel like you have tried almost everything in the book and nothing's worked and that's because there are so many key things since I've been in this field that people are missing and so I want to set the intention for today I usually do this beforehand so people don't think I'm too weird of a hippie person but I felt I don't know I feel like it's just so fitting so I do sage right to just like cleanse the energy and get things ready for what's going on in what we're going to be going into for this these two days is really breaking down limiting beliefs breaking through walls understanding what's going on and so if you get triggered if you get triggered by anything because we're going to talk about eating disorders we're going to talk about abuse we're going to talk about self-sabotage we're going to talk about suicidal thoughts i want to open with saying this space is so safe it is so safe because somewhere along our journeys maybe not to certain extremes we've all felt something which is why we're all called here together nothing is on accident ever but the journey through that is leaning into it so that we can heal so feel through it know that it's safe know that this is the time that you can ask your questions i'm not sure if anyone's commenting sometimes facebook does this so if i can't see comments i will make sure to go through after um i trust that everything is perfectly aligned um as we're going through this like i said it is a safe split safe space to lean in to really understand what's going on to know that you are supported in this space and the only way to heal something is to feel it and so over these two days we're going to be talking about why so many women get tra trapped inside of this ibs cycle and why all these diets and these lifestyles and all these kind of things haven't been working consistently over time Okay, there's, there's science behind this, there is soul behind this, there's just systems and routines and things of that nature that need to be addressed. And then we're going to be talking about the tools and how we rebuild. Okay, so today is all about what the heck is going on? Like, why is this stuff happening? What's going on with my body? And why busting myths, essentially. Um, it's going to run about an hour long. If you can't watch the whole thing, that's okay. All you have to do is come up to the top of our Facebook group, you'll see, or if you're watching the replay, top of our Facebook group, you'll see the guide section and you'll see everything in there. You'll see the homework that my team is going to drop once we get off this call. You'll see the graphics to kind of help break stuff down and then you'll see this live training so you can tune back in. The replays will be up until Thursday and then take it down and as we do, we take, the, we take these down and we repurpose them for programs later in the line this one will be launching midtime early next year um as we move into you know understanding the nervous system and talking more about anxiety and all that kind of stuff so you guys are going to get immense value because this will eventually be a paid program so yay you i want to start off by saying i'm just can we lock in the moment that you are here you know you're choosing to show up you made this time for yourself Oftentimes we just like click an advertisement or click something on Instagram or Facebook or something like that And it just seems very passive But do you know how many people see the same ad see the same post see the same things and they don't make the commitment They don't make the time 
you're here for a reason. And you're here because you cho chose yourself. You know, we have money, we have health, we have all these kind of things, but the one thing we don't get back is our time. And so I never ever take that for granted. And I really wanna just take a moment to breathe that in and celebrate that. So take a deep breath with me. <sighs> and know how proud of you I am and how excited I am to be and start this journey, whether you're an old friend or a new one, I'm excited. And the reason that is, is because I remember it was what, almost six years now that I remember when I was in the space of like, I have no idea what's going on in my body. I had no idea. So I tried everything. I manipulated things. And at that point in my life, it was my rock bottom moment. I, I remember it so cool, so deep in my core of sitting on this balcony of my partner at the time. And he had almost killed me multiple times. I it was a very toxic and abusive relationship. And I, you know, I had multiple health issues. I had, uh, my hair was falling out. My skin had these weird flare ups, my IBS. Like I maybe went to the bathroom once a week if I was lucky. Um, I had panic attacks maybe every week. And I had zero relationships because I was so afraid and ashamed to leave my house. And I just, all these toxic maneuverings, whether it was drugs or alcohol or over exercising or binging and purging, it was, it was this full spectrum of not understanding where I belonged in this world. And my outside world was reflecting that. And so maybe you haven't had something extreme, but you've had something along those lines. And honestly, as I was going through this journey, it, it felt like there was so much to clean up. And maybe you can relate to that feeling. Like I, at 24, I was like, I, it's not that I don't want to live. I just don't want to live this way anymore. But I don't know how to get out of it because <clears throat> I had spent the last 10, 11 years living in this lifestyle of toxicity and abuse and not knowing my worth and, you know, using my body as the weapon as opposed to a tool and as a, as a, you know, something to respect. I just abused her. And I remember sitting in that moment and I was like, I don't, I don't have a damn clue. I don't have a damn clue how to get myself. But all I knew was that I had to get up off that floor. I had to start making choices and I had to start doing things and that's what leads me to doing these master classes because that's where I started. It was podcasts, it was master classes, it was, you know, webinars because webinars were still a thing at that time. Um, it was blogs, it was books. Like I became obsessed with this whole, I'm going to heal my own self through these contents because I wasn't yet ready to invest yet in stuff. And then ultimately I got to the space of, investing in myself to learn about nutrition and heal myself and then get specialized in gut health and that came together to make this whole gut brain connection thing that I now because my background is psychology and to heal but the thing that was the problem and maybe you've experienced this let me know in the comment that everything when it comes to IBS recovery <clears throat> is low FODMAP eliminations restrictions and everything that comes to anxiety and depression is chalk therapy and medications now none of these in and of themselves are wrong none of them but i have a history of an eating disorder i'm studying all these theories i'm applying them to myself i can't look at a brussels sprout the same like i i can't and so everything i'm learning in school and applying and all these kind of things it's just nothing is working here I'm feeling like rubbish. I got to the point that I eliminated 13 different food groups. I had, you know, I was over exercising, under sleeping. I was doing, I was doing the things, things, right? Biohacking, all the kind of stuff. And I would love to actually know what have you guys tried? You know, all the times we say like, I've tried all the things, but what are all the things that you have tried? And I'd love to know if it helped, if it eliminated bloating, if it, you're still doing it, how are you feeling on it? Like, how is that going for you? Like I said, I can't see the comments. So I will look at it after and I will reply after. Um, but <laughs> I did low fat, I did keto, I did carnivore, I did fasting, I cut out 
dairy, gluten, soy, soy, sugar. Like I was, again, I was drinking smoothies and eating soup. That's all I could tolerate. And the funny thing about that is I thought I was healthy. I was convinced that this was healthy. Oh, I can see Coleman. Hi, Brady. Yes, everything. Um, yeah, and so it, it was one of these things. So if this is not your first rodeo, right? Because you've tried so many things. Please give yourself grace. Please give yourself grace on that because it's it's not that for your lack of willpower or discipline or any of the kind of stuff our anxiety brain will tell us that we're not strong enough, disciplined, that we're whatever. It's not you. It's the system that this industry has because IBS is a symptom. Anxiety is a symptom, but we keep chasing it and treating it like it's a root cause, which is why we had food fear, which is why we have all these food sensitivities, which is why it quote unquote can't be healed. When the women of my world, they get healed. Like, I don't know why people say that is the thing with gut health. And I want to emphasize this one, everything on the internet, run it by your doctor. Like this is just the disclaimer of the internet Two. We need to test before anything. So if you've gone through the protocols of, you know, it's not SIBO, it's not parasites, it's not an overgrowth of like candida or something like that. And they just kind of label you with the, you know, we see irritation in your bowel. Let's call it IBS. IBS in and of itself, in my world, in a running joke with the people that I work with, it's BS. Because it's, we don't know what's wrong with you. Did so many women, myself included, use that as a label? I can't do that, I have IBS. I can't have that, I have IBS. You know, I'm just gonna stay in tonight. I have IBS. I can't wear that, I have IBS. No, I can't go on that date, I have IBS. And then the anxiety creeps in. Then the not knowing, not the not enoughness, the the things our mind starts to do. And it sets us on this path of inconsistency, of being stuck in this vicious cycle, of being lost. That is not your fault. Because the coolest thing is, I've had migraines since I was a child and then anxieties. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, I mean, it, it's something we've been, we've been doing for a long time. And the migraines and the anxiety, they go hand in hand, actually. And we will talk about that. Um, the abdominal migraines as well because of the gut-brain connection. But we're going to talk about that kind of the middle of this is when we're going to be talking about that. Um, but the reason these things, like I said, aren't correct and all the gut gurus and all the, you know, even nutritionists like and doctors, like they don't study nutrition. First off, doctors have like one module on it. And then the doctor friends that I have, cardiologists, you know, endocrinologists, things like that, like they've told me the thing that they've learned about at school about low FODMAP diet is just give it to them because it'll distract them about their other symptoms. Ouch. Ouch. And it makes you feel like you are broken which is why we named this program Kuntzigi, because it is my favorite, favorite. Nah, I have two. So I, I love Japanese culture, like I have it. Sorry for the bra strap, but like I love, that's actually my brother's handwriting. I love Japanese culture when it comes to healing and the mental health stuff and all these kind of modalities. I really love it because it helps you realize there's alternative ways to healing. And so we're gonna dive into that today. Let me know, are you guys ready? Do you need me to talk slower? Because my team always tells me I talk too fast. <laughs> Cause I get really excited about things. So if you need me to talk slower, I will intentionally try to remind myself, but in the comments, <laughs> let me know if you need it as well. Um, again, my goal for you guys today is no matter if you're a beginner or you've had things since you were six, to walk away feeling empowered, having a game plan, knowing you are not broken and there's nothing wrong. There's just, it takes a full body approach of understanding what's going on, but at the core, it starts with our mindset and our approach to things. This is why in Healing to Happy, we have the triangle. It's 
The bottom is mindset, nutrition, lifestyle. It is not to say nutrition doesn't matter. It's just not the only thing. And eliminations and restrictions and rules and all these kind of things, that's not, that's not my vibe just because I have a history of an eating disorder, so I would never approach things. And because of the successes I have with my clients and my own life, I know they work, <laughs> you know? And it, it's one of those things that when we realize how our body, how to set ourselves free from our mind and our body so that it's not in control of us, but we're in control of it, we can breathe again. We see different insights, we show up differently, we find that confidence that we need. And so for my mission for you today is to understand that it takes a whole body approach. And that the only way to do that is completely recharging the gut and, and going through the gut recharge and really just the steps that that takes and this freedom that we all deserve. So let's dive into that. And so maybe you guys are thinking, why is this free? Um, because I know I did a lot of things. I was like, eh, is this is going to be a huge pitching fest. Like I, how webinars used to be, you know, when you show up and you're like, I literally walked away with zero value. What the heck? So these things are free. One, like I said in the beginning, this is how I learned. I do these things probably once a month. One, to help build community. Two, to help people realize we ain't alone in this stuff. Like we, when it comes to mental health and it comes to poop stuff, we never talk about it. We never talk about it. And I'm not saying we need to discuss it at the dinner table, but it needs to be a conversation <clears throat> that we at least have a space to go and have solutions in. Not just like how we, when we go to the doctor and they're like, you have this, 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 this wrong with you. And you're like, I knew that already. And they're like, so low FODMAP to manage it. Here's some medications. Oh, you're constipated. Here's some laxatives. Bye, see you in three months. And you're like, that's not really a solution to the problem. And so my mission in life is to give solutions. Simple as that. And the other thing is, again, these things are just programs that get taken down, put into programs all in together. And so it helps to expand that. And there are certain things this helps to warm up to different programs. So they get put into like modules like Gut Recharge or the Labyrinth or things like that. But I just wanted to be open and honest with you guys because I don't like when I go through things and I'm like, <laughs> If that was one of your concerns, hi, welcome. And so what I want you guys to really grasp, and let's start with the concept of kunsugi, okay? Just get that one out of the way. Kunsugi is Japanese culture. It's, maybe you've seen them, they're bowls that they have the gold paint that look like they're covering up cracks, right? What this actually is, <clears throat> is it's golden repair. So if something breaks, they glue it back together with gold to make it even more beautiful. This now, looking back in hindsight of my recovery through IBS, through anxiety, through addictions, through abuse, through trauma, that's how I view this entire journey which is how I have the life I have today, which is how my clients have the lives they have today. But you might be feeling like, girl, what? The stuff sucks. I feel you, I get you, I get you right in that space, but hear me out, okay? So the actual practice of this is an art form. So it's not like accident, I'm gonna get water because this little tickle in my throat is really annoying me. <clears throat> so the actual practice of this is they take a bowl, they wrap it in a towel so the pieces don't go flying anywhere. They wrap it in a towel, they take a hammer, crack it in a few spots, breathe, let it fall. They observe the beauty of the broken pieces. See how they fell, they're not quick to rush to clean it up, it's just this observation of the mess and how even a mess of broken glass or ceramic or what have you can be beautiful and then you take glue you glue it back together not perfectly because that's not what we strive for in life but just enough to make the bowl to put it in place getting all the pieces there and then you can still see the cracks so 
you gotta file away the excess glue because you don't need it and then you paint the cracks with gold not as a cover-up but to highlight the journey how many of you feel like that's what IBS could be or anxiety and mental health could be or abuse or loss or trauma could be If you're not there yet, that's okay. It's okay. Give yourself grace. But let's break down. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, this tickle in my throat is just like, whatever. Um, let's break down what each of those means in the process of healing anxiety and why this is the method I to chose how to teach this with. So today is going to be all about the breaking. Tomorrow is going to be about the rebuilding. Okay. So let's start with the bowl. The bowl is us. Who we are at the time before having anything that broke us, anything that really changed us. We're kind of just going through the motions of life. Nothing's really damaged us, but nothing has really excited us either. We're just a bowl. You know, I, I, I know that's how I felt. I felt like I was kind of just like, like an ant, <laughs> you know, just like going to work, coming back, going to work, coming back, drinking wine, coming back, getting mad at someone, coming back, going to the gym, coming back. Like it was the spectrum, but it was on a predictable scale. There was no excitement. I had yet to travel like I did in my life. I, I was the type of friend that if someone left me from one spectrum, say like here's a bar if a friend was here and we were there together and she wandered over here I would get mad because I didn't know how to be alone I didn't have any type of self-care practice I had my routines kept me safe and that's okay but now looking back in hindsight that wasn't life I was just going through the motions and probably going to fulfill the lineage that was in my family and then unfortunately at 22 years old when I was sitting at a sushi bar with one of my friends I get a phone call from my brother saying he got a phone call from the police about my mom being rushed to the hospital we had no idea. No idea. We get to the hospital. No one's talking to us. Which, obviously, not a good sign. They send in a social worker. Not a good sign. Two days later, my mom passed away. That was my first hit to my bowl using the hammer. <sighs> but then we have the towel that goes around the bowl. And maybe you've had something similar. Not to that extent, but something shook up your bowl. You were going through the motions and things were just... They just were. There wasn't excitement. There wasn't heartache. There wasn't... It was just like, meh. Kind of if you've ever been on SSRIs or antidepressants, you're just kind of numb to all emotions. You're like, I don't feel excited, but I also don't feel sad, and I don't know how I feel about that. So, then they have the towel, right, that places around the bowl to make sure the glass doesn't shatter all over. And so in Kunzigi, this they talk about this being either a, you know, it could be your friends, your family, your self-righteousness, like the integrity, like you needed to shake things up because you knew you deserved better. It could be a loved one. It could be your kids. Something that protects you. It's your faith. It could be God, the universe, what have you. Something that keeps you safe. For me, that was my friends and my family. Eh, I wouldn't say my family at that time, actually. My friends, definitely. 
they kept the pieces and also my integrity. At that point, I hadn't yet been that 24 year old sitting on the balcony. I had two years of self-destruction. After that, I had gone to Asia, lived in Thailand, and my health took a huge hit. No matter the amount of low FODMAP or the perfect diet or any of that kind of stuff, the unresolved trauma that was stored in my body because of the gut-brain connection, because of the way that our body functions, because of neuroinflammation and all the kind of things that we're going to get into today, it doesn't matter. Not that it's not useful, definitely useful, but IBS is a lifestyle thing. <clears throat> it's all rooted in lifestyle. It's the chronic stress and the chronic inflammation in our body that's usually rooted in our lifestyle practices. And so whatever is keeping the integrity. And then we have the hammer. I actually want to go back to the bowl because the bowl is when it's kind of how I started connecting these things to the IBS journey and breaking this down. Because the bowl is when we're chasing the wrong things in our life. Food, exercise, low FODMAPs, or high FODMAPs, I guess would be it, gluten, dairy, soy, all these kind of things. And the reason eliminations do not work when it comes to IBS, yes, they're helpful when it comes to SIBO. Yes, they're helpful when it comes to candida. Yes, they're helpful when it comes to parasites. But they're supposed to be for a small period of time. But we never challenge that. The amount of times, I tell you when I get on consultations with women that have been on low FODMAP for decades, it's maximum supposed to be like six weeks to 90 days. Like it's not supposed to be decades. <sighs> Eliminations don't work because food's not the issue. Like I said earlier, IBS is a nervous system issue. So studies show that, and have shown, that people with IBS and people that don't have IBS, they've eaten the same foods, right? They've had the same gases come off of them. But those with IBS feel it. They feel the constipation, the heartburn, the rush, the diarrhea, the cramping, the bloating. They feel that because their nervous system is out of whack because the serotonin and the dopamine and, and the neurotransmitters that are housed in our gut aren't regulated properly. It's not to say they don't have them. They just don't feel them. This is why maybe you felt when you're like looking at your friends and you're like, how the heck can you eat that burger? Like if I eat that burger, I'd be, I need to be closest to the bathroom and you like walk into a restaurant and you're like trying to be normal and you're like, where? The nearest bathroom. Excuse me, I'll take that table over there. And your friends are like, I don't want to be there near the bathroom. And you're like, oh, I just showed up. <laughs> and then you finally have gotten to the point that you stopped going out and you've isolated yourself. That was my life. Um, so this doesn't work because you're not addressing the root cause. It's not me saying, okay, yeah, like you're irritated by dairy. Go eat it. That's not what I'm saying. You can remove dairy, kindly, but if you're not addressing the root issue as to why your body is not digesting dairy, you eliminated enzymes. And this is why maybe two weeks later, then you're like, I still feel rubbish. Like I felt good for a little bit, but now I feel rubbish still. The heck is going on? I guess I'll try gluten now, even though I love toast. Like I guess I'll try, mm, fine, I'll try it. Two weeks goes by. <sighs> I still feel like crap. Okay, okay, okay. I saw something about nightshades. Let me let me cut out all the nightshades. And then we get to lectins, then we get to soy, then we get to eggs, then we get to all the things. Right? Take our food sensitivity kits, which by the way, if you've never watched my live on food sensitivity sensitivity kits, <sighs> Maybe I'll talk about it. Maybe I'll talk about it tomorrow or later today. I don't like them. 
to say the least. But <laughs> what's happening here is you're taking away enzymes and only eating the safe foods. How many of you eat almost the same thing every single day? Give me a hand raising emoji. I know I did. Same thing, all spectrums, not really sure when I'm eating, when I'm not, testing all these things, whatever, but made sure I wasn't eating certain foods. Um, but only had my safe foods. Like, it was so annoying. But what's happening there, it's, it's just like not going to the gym for like six months. And then you walk in there on day one and you're like, that assault bikes looks, he looks sexy. I'm gonna go ride the heck out of him. And you like do like two things and you're like, fuck that, I'm out. And it's like, no, no, whatever. Like, I'm trying not to swear, no poop. You haven't been to the gym in six months. It ain't gonna go so well. That's how it is when we keep eliminating all these foods and we didn't work the muscle, we didn't get the diversity up, we didn't repair the organs that needed to be repaired, we didn't stabilize the gut-brain connection and the neurotransmitters and all that kind of stuff. And then that one day we accidentally went out to eat and we had like one little tiny garlic piece and our body's like, bing, alarm goes off. <sighs> I knew it was garlic, huh? And then our mean girl comes in and she's like, you're not disciplined enough. You're not, you're not self, like you can't go out to eat. You know this, you can't do that. So we isolate ourselves. We blame ourselves. We put ourselves more into a box. Yes, magnesium is amazing. I mean, there's so many different kinds depending on what you're trying to alleviate, but yes. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, Healing um, Happy Gut Gang, there is a post on magnesium that is also very helpful. Um, but yeah, so it's gonna set the alarm bells off. And but the thing is, if we're not addressing the stomach acid, the diversity, the gut-brain connection, the stress and the lifestyle practices that impact all this, we're gonna forever feel like a supplement, like a walking pharmacy. That is how we're gonna feel. Because we gotta get to the root cause. This is why, like, in my programs, we go through the acronym FREE, F-R-E-E. -E. Foundations is the first thing. Because I, you can Google the perfect gut diet nowadays. Like, you can do that. There's a reason people keep getting stuck. And why that doesn't work. <clears throat> and why having a walking pharmacy doesn't work because your body's not taking it in. We're not looking at what the root cause is. We're not putting cracks in our bowl because we're so happy in it. Not happy, safe, I guess, would be the thing. We're just doing the same thing, giving it a different name. Because it feels safe. Because there's not much out there. Gut health is a new industry, y'all. Like, it started, realistically, like 15 years ago. Like, it, it's so new, and it's so confusing, and it's so, such a freaking business. Like, it's so, everything has, like, probiotics in it nowadays, and everything is supposed to heal your gut, and blah, 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 blah. Like, it's not, act sorry, that was very immature of me, but <laughs> it's like, it's not actually getting solution-based because the problem is metabolism. The problem is the gut-brain connection. The problem is the way we're eating. So let me break this down, actually. Let me look at my notes to make sure this is all gonna go hand in hand. Okay, yeah. So let's break this all down. <clears throat> when our body is in B12, folic acid, calcium, shake me all around. <laughs> I love you. Um, so the way that the body works, right? And how anxiety got birthed into us and how um, IBS got birthed into us. So did I say IBS twice or anxiety? Whatever. Our gut and our brain are in constant communication with each other through this thing called the gut-brain axis. Maybe you've heard of her. And this is why 
we call our gut the second brain, multiple reasons um, why we talk about the foods that we eat impact our mental health and the foods that, and the way that we think impact our gut because of this literal highway that goes from our gut to our brain. And our vagus nerve, also known the gut brain axis, gives off these action potentials. Are you following me? Um, that tells all of our organs how to function. It delivers the nutrients they need. It, 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 it combines all the things. It makes sure everything's optimally function, op, functioning optimally. If we are chronically under stress, if we have trauma, like I did after my mom and putting myself into that relationship, our vagus nerve is overstimulated to the point that the tone stops. What happens then? Communication to the survival organs stops. Meaning our thyroid, our internal thermostat isn't functioning optimally. Our liver, the thing that detoxes us, our pancreas and our gallbladder, the thing that stores and excretes our bile, which is our natural laxative producer, our adrenals, our energy, aren't getting the nutrients they deserve, no matter how perfect our diet is going because our chronic stress about getting our diet right because of IBS and our routines on track and all these kind of things, it becomes an obsession that continues this inflammation that's happening in our body. And because the nutrients that we usually eat aren't going to our brain, our brain then gets this thing called neuroinflammation. And so think of it as when we have inflammation in our joints, arthritis. When we have inflammation in our throat, it's a sore throat. When we have inflammation in our brain, it shows up in things. Yes, we can sometimes get migraines and stuff like that, but we also get ADD, ADHD, OCD, anxiety, and depression. All of this is to say, anxiety and IBS, they are symptoms. One is caused by the other, but we're chasing them separately because we're stuck in our bowl. Because this is, this is what we're taught. It's what the doctors have told us. It's maybe what a nutritionist has told us. It's a weight loss specialist. I don't know. I have a lot of CrossFit people come to me talking about. They told me to go on food sensitivity kits and low FODMAP and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, do they specialize in gut health? They're like, no, it's weight loss. And I'm like, please stop doing that. But when we're stressed and we're trying to obsess and we're trying to get the perfect thing, we're not looking at the full picture where if you're like me, you're probably not eating like fast food and doing things. You're like doing the right things, right? Like you guys are talking a lot about supplements and eating foods and doing these kind of things and, you know, sticking to your safe foods. It's <laughs> that's the problem because I'm sure there's a lot of fear and that there's a lot of control in that bowl. And so let's talk about the towel, right? So I talked about it being, you know, self-integrity. It can be your faith. It could be your religion. It could be your family, your friends, your kids, whomever. This has to, actually, let me, yes, my toes have gone blue and my doctor doesn't know why I cut myself. And it takes a month to heal now. I would go check um, your iron levels and most likely that's metabolism. So often when we have a sluggish metabolism, this is all what we cover inside of Gut Recharge. Um, when we have a sluggish metabolism, our hand, so when we think of metabolism, we often think of like skinny people. We're like, oh, they just have a quick metabolism. Um, that's not what actually metabolism is. It's like your internal thermostat and how everything functions and gets distributed in your body. And so this is when we start to experience hold, cold hands, cold fingers, um, hair falling out. We get very hangry, um, you know, 
all those kind of things. We're cold all the time. This is a slow metabolic function. Um, it shows that our body's temperature when we consume food isn't going up when it should be. And so it could slow things down, but I would have them look at that. Um, as a bear. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, but I would have them look into that and then also checking your um, iron levels and your liver and how that's all processing. I'm doing visual visualization. There we go, Laura. Meditation, jogging, and yoga is helping a lot, but I still have issues with my stomach. I love that. That is such a, honestly, exercise, yoga, meditation, breath work. I love it. I love it. Like these things, we're going to get into this, the whole patience and time aspect of stuff, because it takes a long time for your body to trust and know that she's safe. Hi, Stephanie, but I still have some bad days and I can't wear certain clothes or go anywhere that doesn't have a time. I feel you. The anxiety, the things, they help sometimes. It's the consistency. Okay, so I'm going to get into that. That's our last one for today. Patience and time and observation and stuff like that. So we'll get into that, ladies. I got you love tapping um okay so the towel right so the towel is what keeps everything safe your friends your family your surroundings oftentimes we get ourselves into a bubble So if you weren't in my brainwave masterclass or the reframe masterclasses, I talk a lot about this when it comes to the subconscious. This is what we do more in um, the labyrinth program, but who we are right now is made up of a, is a 95% cellular memory of who we've been over time. Majority of that based off of who we were prior to seven years old, because we we're still in our theta and delta brainwave stage, so we didn't have critical thinking. So this all meaning when you're a little girl and you're at the checkout at the grocery store and you know, your mom tells you she's dealing with like her big world, big mama bills and life. And maybe she had a fight with your dad or mom or whoever, like she's arguing with someone <clears throat> in her head and you're sitting there, your three-year-old self like, mm can I please have this cute little dolly? Can I please have it? And she's like, she snaps at you. And she just goes, no, you don't deserve that. In your little three-year-old brain, you don't know that she means you don't deserve that because she doesn't have, she has bills to pay. She has things, she's stressed. In your mind, you have this belief, oh, I'm not worthy. I've been a good girl, but how do I now find this love throughout my life? How do I then find this validation? How do I keep growing, doing, being faster, stronger, growing? Doing, being the same. We carry these beliefs, and what we do is we put ourselves in these environments as we grow up. For example, I didn't have the best friends growing up. I never belonged in my head. And I thought I never belonged. I always sought out approval from my parents, no matter what it meant. I've had so many jobs at one time. I was a perfect athlete. Did all the things just to get their love. But I never treated my body right. I always abused her. I always, you know, it's what I saw in my house. Even to this day. Going home and seeing my dad, like, it's it's a very triggering experience because they love to have fun, and I love that about them, but they also, once they have fun, they then go on prolon. They have fun, they go on prolon. They have fun, they go on prolon. To me, it's very triggering. I don't like it. And so, over time, we make the same choices that we see in our surroundings. So sometime, that towel isn't so safe. It's what we know. It's what we grow. And so oftentimes we're sitting and we're, we have this belief like, this is just the way I am. How many of you have said that? <laughs> or this runs in my family. How many of you have said that? Or maybe you've even done like the little girl run where it's like, just accept me as I am. This is how I am. <clears throat> I've said all of those things. But it's just not 
true. And I start to have a you do a year ago. And I start having anxiety almost how you yeah. I'm sorry for your loss, Melina. And I feel you. <clears throat> I feel you. But why this isn't why these belief systems in our mind of this is just the way I am or, you know, accept it as it is, or all these kind of things of, you know, like I was told we're gonna have thyroid issues in our family and that getting pregnant's gonna be a problem and all these different kind of things. But also to challenge that belief. I've learned about epigenetics where Yes, we have the genetic predisposition, but our lifestyle and our nutrition and the way we handle stress, we get to turn that puppy off and on. I used to have hypo, well, hyper and then hypothyroidism. I no longer do. I used to not have a cycle for five years. It took me six and a half to finally have a consistent cycle. Now it's fine like clockwork, with the moon. I used to have crippling anxiety and depression and suicidal thoughts, and I couldn't get out of bed, and then I couldn't go to bed. I was very manic. I sleep on the dot, 10 p.m. without an alarm, 6.30, like clockwork. I was told addiction would run in my family. I've done the 12 steps. I've gotten myself out of very questionable situations and I'm here today. And the thing about belonging and our self-worth, like, again, we're told that from an early age. We're told this is, you know, you don't belong here. Or people like us don't get that or this is something that runs in our family. So, you know, divorce runs in our family or people don't make money or people aren't like that. Like we don't do that. We choose the belief system and this is where picking your towel is powerful, which is why I love doing things like this. Like seeing you all comment and relate to each other in the comments. Like I literally have chills. Because what we listen to, who we surround ourselves with, what we lean into, and how we find our personal integrity, that's the towel. Sometimes it might feel like your friends and your family don't get you. And if you align with me, I bet you that was quite often. But over time, that shit doesn't matter. Because you got you. We have to build trust, we have to build that self-integrity, and that comes from what we listen to, that comes from what we do daily, that comes from what we surround ourselves in, that comes from how we protect ourselves. And the fact that you're freaking here shows you're on the right track. And I hope you get that and I hope you can feel that from me. Because there are so many people that say they're gonna do things and they, they buy a book, they never open it, or you know they saw something, they saved it on Instagram, never looked at it again, or we've all done those things. I do that with finances. But <laughs> there are all these things that we say we're not going to do, but you're here. Giving your time, showing up, changing the thoughts and the beliefs that you've heard around IBS anxiety and being like, hmm, I don't really know that girl, but that sounds interesting. Why is she talking about Japanese culture? <laughs> let's learn. Let's challenge this belief because this, I'm sick of this. I'm in. The fact that you keep believing in you and keep showing up, that's huge. Even if you're not there yet. The fact is, do you believe you're gonna get there? In the context of your life. Here's the thing about time that I was gonna touch on. Here's the thing about time. And what I've learned in my life journeys and what I try to instill in my clients is when we take it away, it feels so freeing. I know in my lifetime, or I knew, I'm gonna be healthy and I'm gonna be someone that matters. I'm gonna do something that matters in this world. And for a long time, it was always like, I'm gonna do it by the end of the month. I am gonna heal my IBS 
in this whole whole 30 I'm gonna do it and you get to 30 days and you're like well I can't be trusted I'm undeserving I don't belong here like it's this whole thing we swim ourselves inside of But what would it be if it's just <clears throat> health is the context of my life? <clears throat> what if instead of January you started today? It wasn't just like, yeah, like for January, I'm gonna do dry January and like never eat gluten and dairy for like just January. So what happens after? I'm gonna go to Chipotle and down 18 margaritas. And then I'm gonna eat all the chips. I don't know why I chose Chipotle. What? Who goes to Chipotle? Uh, anyways, this is what we get trapped inside of. But if we put the context of our life, my life is healthy. This has been so freeing to me, right? My life is healthy. Most days, I live within that spectrum. And something we cover deeply inside of the labyrinth and just setting standards for ourselves is when we have IBS and anxiety, our standards are kind of... We're picky, but our self-belief and our self-worth and our confidence are kind of down here, so our standards aren't very high. Over time, we set higher standards, we build that self-growth, we really start to learn. When health becomes the context of our life, we raise the vibration, we stop dipping in and out, we stop checking if things are working or not, and we stay consistent consistency over a lifetime heals all wounds addiction in any form feels like the toxic side you keep having diet restricts and medications for you so much I crash my brain Brady I feel you that resonates deep with me as well Melina this whole thing is how to heal I have anxiety <sighs> And so when it comes to our towel, we have to create our own. And the fact that you're here means you're on the right track. Your family isn't always going to get it. And we got to stop trying to change your family. It's not your job. Your job is to lead your own life and watch as they follow. But if you're doing that from a space of fear and lack and anxiety and obsession and being the picky eater, that doesn't really make anyone want to come join the party but if you're coming at it from a space that's like I'm doing this out of integrity I feel good about what I'm doing it's not from a fear state I'm not eliminating a whole bunch of things I'm just doing this with curiosity and wonder and all these kind of things now what and this is where the hammer starts to come in so the cool thing about a hammer is it can be used to break and it can be used to build This is where I see IBS and anxiety. It's the hammer we needed to get our bowl out of this wishy-washy kind of thing that's happening. IBS is this thing that helps you be so aware of what's happening to your body, what your energy storages are at, who you wanna surround yourself with, who is supportive in your life, how you wanna show up. like. The fact that it's leading you to yoga, to meditation, to, you know, tapping, to all the things that you ladies mentioned earlier, like, most people don't do that. Most people don't do that. But we are so afraid to break. We're so afraid to try other things, to experience, to test out different hammers, to test out different places that it wants to go, that we stay in fight or flight, that we stay, you know, trapped if you listen to my seeds of health master class that's like the, the log that we hold on to the way the nervous system works and i spoke a little bit on it earlier when we're getting hit with hammers for me it was my abusive relationship for me it was the orthorexia that came with the ibs anxiety for me it was the death of my mom for me, it was the under-eating and over-exercising and under-sleeping. 
all these hammers come in. And when we get into the IBS space and we're only looking at the nutrition side of stuff and we're not looking at our nervous system, we're missing the point. We need to be looking at ways to restore our vagal tone and re-nourish the organs that are being depleted because food sensitivities, because stomach acid, because leaky gut, all of these things are rooted in our thyroid, our pancreas, our liver, our gallbladder, our adrenals. We can't just heal it by drinking aloe vera juice and singing kumbaya and all these kind of things. Like Those things are great, but they're management techniques. And so what we have to look at is how do we make these hammers feel less <sighs> like they're only breaking us? How do we get comfortable in viewing things? How do we really navigate these things? And what I see in my world and with my clients is <sighs> getting into routines that matter, not just morning and night routines. How often are you eating? When are you eating? How frequently are you eating? How are you feeling about before and when you're after you're eating? Again, this comes in that F of the foundations. Where did you learn that? Why do you do that? You know, the way we reprogram our nervous system and we reprogram our mind and we overcome trauma and stress and anxiety is we, one, have to have awareness. Where the heck did I learn this? Me, I learned my eating habits in the wrong way of doing it from my family. And friends along the way in high school that taught me about silly things and eating disorders and what have you. <laughs> no, aloe vera is good. Like it's, it's not to say aloe vera is bad. It's just like I, when I travel, I usually will have aloe vera just because I know I'm going to be eating foods that aren't the best. Um, and it helps to just like soothe things down. I'll have it on an empty stomach in the morning, coats the digestive system. Like it's fine. Again, this goes back to point one that I made that like di uh, like eliminations and supplements and all the, all the things. That's not how we heal. And so when is this linked to slow metabolism too yes brady yes that's exactly what this is that's what this whole thing is you have to know on that and um, so our nervous system has to do with having a slow metabolism and so like i said when our body is stuck in fight or flight that's when we have the neuro inflammation that's going on in our brain because of when back in the day there was danger our nervous system went and our blood flow went to the survival organs and the places like our muscles and our tissues and our all the things so we could book it so we could run the things that it don't it does not go to is our digestion and our hormones so if you're experiencing hormonal issues this is why the alternative is famine so if you are struggling with constipation that's usually regulated with depression and a slow vagal tone all that kind of stuff what happened back in the day is when we were famished, our body didn't need to eliminate stuff. So we hold on to weight. We can't eliminate. We struggle. We're slow. Our adrenals, we're just like always feeling like we're in a, in a daze. This is because of this thing called the enteric nervous system, which is, again, the thing, the action potentials that I touched on earlier. And so <clears throat> if we're not addressing these things and we're only looking at supplements and we're only looking at, you know, nutrition and we're not looking at the other hammers in our life like the trauma like the stress like our self-worth like our routines and the need to rush or belong and control we're going to be stuck we get stuck in the stories You know, we, there's a huge thing. <clears throat> I mean, I wrote a post recently um, 
different doctors they have where it's if you don't deal with your chronic stress your trauma your lifestyle routines no amount of metal detoxes and supplements and low FODMAP foods are going to heal you we need to dive deep we need to explore and so when the hammer comes in and kun sigi it's not meant to mean that dish is now broken it's cracking it so life can come through the best things that's ever happened to me is my IBS my anxiety and that abusive relationship it's taken me years to sit in that truth but my life would not be where it is right now with the health that I have with the career, with the life, with the love of my life, with the confidence I hold, I wouldn't have any of that if none of this unfolded. Not, like There was a quote that I was listening to today on a podcast where it was like, the treasures are in the triggers. It's so true. The treasures are in the hammer. And that might not land for you yet. And that is okay. But one day, you're going to be walking down the street and it's going to like ding in your head and you're going to be like, oh. That's what that girl with the big earrings was talking about. Oh. (laughs) And next we move into, and like you might be, that's what you might be thinking. It's just like, yeah, but like it's, different for me I don't have big t trauma I don't have anything like that like I don't nothing's wrong we've all experienced trauma in our life whether it's big t or little t trauma and if you have IBS and you have anxiety your body is literally telling you that she's telling you she's stuck in a chronic state of inflammation she's telling you she's hungry she's telling you she needs rest she's telling you she needs nourishment in a different way than what you've been doing And we have to be okay with experimenting with more. We have to be okay with moving into more. With curiosity and wonder. Not as a report card and, you know, saying this is right or wrong or any of that kind of stuff. Just as information purposes. This is why when I'm working with clients or even in the gut recharge, the week, the foundations week of the pre-work, it's just information. The tracking we do, the understanding, like it is... It is just to know where we got to work our way up from. This is how we bring it into ourselves. This is how we stop outsourcing. This is how we stop getting lost and thinking a doctor is going to know more than our body. This is how we get the trust back in our body, in our life. And how we can stay consistent in this growth and these patterns. And so the last thing I want to touch on as we move into this is after they break the bowl and the towel our human wants to come in and fix it right away we hate messy things we want to clean it up we want quick fixes we want to just get rid of it but what they do is they open and observe It's all contained within the towel. It's never too much or too little because nothing in life that we're ever given is. And you just observe it. What does it mean? What do the pieces look like? How do we navigate this? How are we gonna put the pieces together? Like what is this? But without touching it at first. You know, I've I've had clients where it's they come in and they've gotten their food sensitivity kits, done the whole shebang, and they're like, look, it's everything I eat. Fix me. And they get my whole spiel on why I don't agree in food sensitivity kits, and if anyone ever tells you to go get one, slide into my DMs and we'll have a chat. Um, 
but they go through this thing and they come back and they go okay they got that at first and they're like okay you know I'm just I'm committed to I'm committed to my healing I'm committed so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it I'm gonna eliminate all these foods I know Thanksgiving comes and they're like ah oh. But I love grandma's pumpkin pie. I love it, but there's dairy and there's sugar and there's gluten and I can't have that. Like, I can't. Uh. Screw it. I'm just gonna eat the cake. They try again. Okay. Crap, it's Christmas. I love mulled wine. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. New year, new me. Got it. <sighs> you know what? Christmas was a little bit of a banger, so I'm just gonna fast. And then I'm gonna do this whole thing. I'm gonna do a water fast. It's gonna be great. And they keep going. And then they get to me and my office. Thank you, Brady. They get to me and my office and they're sitting in their, you know, virtual consultation. They're sitting and then they're like, you know what, it's just not me. I'm not strict enough, I'm not disciplined enough. You know, I keep starting and stopping and starting and stopping again. And maybe you felt this. <sighs> I know I did. I did a new cleanse every Monday. At the time I was still teaching English and I was the girl that they would always, they're like, what cleanse are we on this Monday? And I'm like, yeah. So I feel you. I felt too uncomfortable and they've felt this too. To sit and look at the mess and the question I always ask them Why do you think it's food then? Shouldn't there be, like what would make you wanna show up in your nutrition routine daily? What would that include? I'd get to have grandma's pie, sometimes mulled wine. You wouldn't be so strict. I don't like juice cleanses. I actually hate them. I'm hungry all the time. Okay. So why do we keep doing that, expecting a different result every single year? Oh yeah. The thing is, none of those things are innately bad. It's not to say you have pie every single day. It's not to say you have mulled wine every single day. But if there isn't an overgrowth and there's not an infection, if there is just inflammation in your bowel that has nothing to do with some type of infection, these extreme fasting and eliminations, it, picture it like baking cookies. You get the cookies to come to your house like the pre-made cookies, right? Toll House. Put them in the oven. You're like talking to your younger self. And you're like, okay, so you gotta put them in there, 375, bake them for 25, uh, for 12 minutes, take them out at 12 or golden brown, take them out. Just like, okay. You come back in and you realize the oven is unplugged. Why, why is the oven unplugged? Well, you see, like, I, I put them in the microwave, or I put them in the oven, and you said 12 minutes to golden brown, and it wasn't hot yet, so I just unplugged it. Yeah, because you have to preheat the oven. And then you put them in, you wait 12 minutes, or until golden brown. You go, you go wait till it gets to 375. Okay. 
you have a feeling something is off in the kitchen, so you go in and you check on her, and you're like, why is the oven off again? Just like, well, I put them in there, and then, you know, I waited until it was 375, and then it went through, and, um, yeah, they just, they didn't cook. Did you wait 12 minutes? No. No. No, you, you cold brown, and, you know, it was just looking like it was melting, and, you know, I don't, I just, no. Okay. You have to plug in the oven, leave it until it gets to 375, and then you have to wait 12 minutes until golden brown. Okay, 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 okay. I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, I trust, I'll, I'll do it. Okay, so you sit with her and you coach her through it and she gets through it and finally you get there, 12 minutes, golden brown, perfect cookies. Thing is, as humans, we don't wanna wait. So we do the quick fixes like the elimination diets like the low FODMAPs, like the fasting, like the supplements. Because we don't wanna wait. This stuff, it takes time. And if the context of your life is to be healthy and pain-free, that'll take time for your body to catch up because how long have you been in pain? How long have you been putting your body in stress, starving her, undernourishing her, doing these type of things, experimenting, not figuring out consistently what's happening on the root end. Like how long has that been going on? And do you have trust that if your body gets the right nutrients, do you trust that she could heal? Because if we just pause and we observe anxiety, IBS, fibroids these are all symptoms something somewhere in our body set off an alarm response working our way backwards it's fixable I see it all the time I see people fix fibroids all the time IBS all the time anxiety all the time people come off of medications people get back to eating normally the best compliment the best thing that my clients always walk away they're like who would have thought eating more food would have been there success like would have been the healing in this but when we heal the root cause when we calm down and we stop depriving ourselves of nutrient rich foods and being so gung-ho and so in fear when we actually relieve this everything changes everything changes and so for day one we're talking about why so many people get stuck in this cycle this is why we are told low FODMAP is the only management solution. We have to take buckets of supplements because the food industry can't be trusted. People want to sell us something all the time and we believe it because we're so, we're just in pain and desperate. And then we just get disappointed in ourselves when those quick fixes don't work. Can you relate to that? It takes time and it's okay that you want it to be fixed tomorrow honestly I see people either go through gut recharge or they go through labyrinth or they do the one-on-one -on -one. it's like four to 13 weeks 14 weeks I see people start to have massive improvement it's not to say the whole shebang opens up and all hell Lula like everything is made but the belief that there's healing over a lifetime, this takes time. Repairing the bowl takes time. But we first have to understand why it broke and that even though it's broke, it is not broken forever. It is repairable and when we repair it with gold, holy pickles, like the world is our oyster. The things I see women do when we get out of this space of pain and fear and overwhelm, like the things I see women do, 
the relationships that are born, the way that they mother their children, the way that they show up, the, the expansion, the careers that they now feel safe enough to explore. Like it is, oh my God, Melina, I feel you. Like it is something, and it is. Like that's the thing is the fact that you really want to, you're planting the seed. So many women just get complacent in this and they go, well, this is just the way it is and this is the way I've always been. It runs in my family, dot, dot, dot. No, I don't have any trust in my body anymore. I ask myself daily, why don't my body, why doesn't my body work with me? Anyone else feels so disconnected or it doesn't feel, oh my God. Yes, Brady, yes. And... Honestly, that's exactly why we have the follow-up thing that I'm going to talk about in a second. But when our body has feel, felt like a weapon for so long, it's so hard to trust her. It's so hard to know what's going on, what she wants. When is she hungry? What is she hungry for? Do you need a nap or a popsicle? Like, I'm not quite sure. It's kind of like dealing with a toddler. You're like, I'm, I don't know. What do, I don't know. You, why are you crying? I don't know. I just, I just put the shoe in the corner. I don't know why, why you're crying. But once we learn how to get into communication with her, and this is, we're going to dive into this tomorrow, and we're going to dive into this in the play, playbook. This is exactly what that is. It's, it's the follow-up to this program. It's two days with a live Q&A coaching that we get to discuss all this. It's about the playbook. It's the how-to of getting in communication and trust with your body again so you can feel confident. It's beautiful. Again, it's two days, two modules, one day Q&A, so a total of three days. But we'll talk about that at the end. But the biggest thing I want you guys to take away, I'm looking at my notes here, I'm trying to see, make sure we stay on time. Um, so to recap, right? The steps and the things that we discussed is one, the bowl is us, right? When it comes to Kunzigi, the bowl is us. It's our center, it's the thing that at that time it kept us safe, whether we're there right now or we were there before. The bowl is us. And then we find our surroundings and we make sure our surroundings are safe and protected so it can hold all of our pieces. And then something somewhere in our life created a crack. I'm so happy that you're releasing. Let it go. Feel it. Like I said, it's a safe place here. So we surround ourselves, we show up to things like this, we have the conversations, we, we find the belief again, the hope that's inside of us, that it's fixable, and we protect, whether it's our faith, our belief systems, what have you, there's some, our self-integrity, we're wrapped in that, and then we have our hammer that is there to break us, but also build us. And this could be life. This could be a big T trauma, like loss, or rape, or eating disorders, or abuse. Or it could be little T trauma, like your parent left you at a grocery store one day, or a friend didn't invite you to a birthday party, or a car accident. There's a full spectrum of things that could be trapped in our body that cause these things. It could be the need to be validated and seen that keeps us going, that keeps us safe, that, that wants us to be in such a controlling state of our nutrition and our diet and our lifestyle. And then when we unfold it and we look at it, we see it's a beautiful mess. But it's our beautiful mess. And it's all the pieces of us. And they're not gone. They're collected in a space. And bit by bit, we get to put them together. We get to create a masterpiece, which is exactly what we're going to be diving into tomorrow, is the rebuilding. And so that completes today. I'm going to move into talking about the playbook and gut recharge and expanding the work on that. If you are complete for today, thank you. You showed up today. The first day is always the easiest. 
Wait till I see you tomorrow. <laughs> That's how it is. You'll see homework and the thread getting dropped by my team. Um, do that, because otherwise this is just Netflix at the end of the day. The way things change is what we take home with us and how what we do after. And so continuing this conversation, we'll have a, like I said, the three-day program, which is called the playbook. And over this program, we're going to have our guides. We're going to figure out the step-by-step -step process on rebuilding our confidence, rebuilding our connection to our body, and rewiring, recalibrating the gut-brain connection so that we can absorb food again. You're going to have lifetime access to this one. This cost $44. And so you get to keep that for a lifetime. And from there, we're going to give you the how-tos. We're going to break it all down for you. It's just that next step, that how-to, that bag, that piggybacks off of this um and also right now on early bird special is the gut recharge program which is our four-week program that starts next month it goes you have modules that break down the science behind it all so if you've ever been confused on what's happening with your body and like every time you walk into a doctor's office you're like i have no idea what you just said this will help you find your voice again because I'm, I'm not using science words, that's not my vibe, but it's breaking down the questions that we need to be asking so, because we understand our body again. And so you get a pre-work and then we walk you through the whole free method, which is acronym free, F-R-E-E. -E. So it's the foundations where we really understand what's going on with our body, the reprogramming. Like I said, the microbiome can change within four days, gut-brain connection, neuroplasticity, all that kind of stuff just by exploring the right foods, the right lifestyle practices, the right environments. We get into the safely exploring things. You know, when you've had IBS for a long time, it's hard to eat normally. It's hard to go out to eat. It's hard to feel safe to reintroduce food. So how do we do that in a safe space, in a safe container so we can eat normally again and eventually evolve our lifestyle? So we talk about, you know, going out to eat, talking to our family, picking the right environments, all that kind of stuff. And the thing that I love about this program, it's our signature program. It was the first program I ever created before I under, ever did any of these things. Or um, the Labyrinth, which is our anxiety course, which is currently running. Um, this is the Metabolism Restoration course. And I love it because it's everything I know and knew and I update it all the time. And you get live Q&As. So every Friday after you've watched the modules, which will take you maybe an hour a week, if that, um, you come in and you're, you're able to ask your questions. So you get me as your coach for four weeks. That's what I love. So if you've ever felt like you're alone, you've done courses or you've done doctor's appointments and you're like, I feel like you didn't even, you have no idea. I'm trying to reframe that in this industry so that you get supported, you have someone that can walk through you, answer your questions, making sure in those four weeks you know the right steps to take. The women that have gone through this program, like I was saying throughout this thing, it's like they go back to eating normally. They are the wives, the mother, the friend, the daughter. Like They have so much energy. They're able to eat normally again. They're able to expand. They, they stop living in fear because they know what the heck is happening in their bodies. It is a beautiful, beautiful journey. I resonate with more than that. I love you, Brittany. Thank you. That means the world. But it's a beautiful journey. And if you're ready to embark on that, I want to invite you. This is the last time we're going to be running it in 2021. And the last time at this price. So right now it's on early bird sale for $697. Normally it's 888. That price would be going up in 2020, uh, 2022. Oh my God, 2022. Um, and so if you wanted to get in, you do get lifetime access to this and navigating through that. If you know, you're triggered by money, you're triggered by investing in yourself, any of that kind of stuff. I never want people to make investments that are outside their reach. If all you can do right now is the free stuff. Perfect. You're exactly where you need to be keep doing the things you got to do until you work your way up to where you got to be like like I said I love this stuff too but the paid stuff where we invest in ourselves 
that's how we challenge our belief to money. That's how we expand. That's how we make trust in ourselves to begin with. Like, I am worth this investment. And so you just have to sit with that. And I invite you, if that is your block right now, like, sit, work through it, see what comes up for you. These early bird prices, so the $44 for the um, playbook, and the $697 for the gut recharge are on early bird until Wednesday. On Wednesday at 12 p.m., those prices will be going up. Um, and again, we get started for the gut recharge in three weeks. And the playbook is November 3rd. November 3rd, November 4th, November 5th. Like I said, you have lifetime access to all those replays. But... I'll talk more about that stuff tomorrow. If you have any questions, just drop it in the group. Me or my team will get back to you. Um, again, I love you. I'm so happy this resonated. Tomorrow is all about rebuilding, putting our little bowl in our pot together so we can walk away looking even more beautiful, feeling more beautiful with our journey and repairing it with gold. I love you. You're beautiful. You're healing. You're on your way because you're here. Sit in that sitting there. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.